Farm Bureau. Ryan Brown, co-host of The Next Round, which is a multimedia show that will make its live debut a week from today. Is that the proper way to describe the new venture, Ryan? Yeah, it depends on who you're talking to. I mean, we've launched our own digital platform. So, yeah, I mean, multimedia has a great description. We'll be streamed. Uh, we'll be available on all uh, video platforms. Um, we'll be available for download. Uh, so that's about as multimedia as it gets, right? There, there you go. If uh, if you want it in a digital format, you can get it starting next Monday. But already some content that's out there as well as we get closer and closer to the start of the college football season. Ryan, I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk to you today. We're, we're previewing all the teams in the SEC and the teams in the top 25 and going alphabetically in the SEC, Auburn and Alabama, back-to-back, uh, -back, so it made sense to, uh, to go to a guy that covers both schools. Let's start with Alabama. Um, yeah. It, it, in a lot of ways, it feels like more of the same. It's a loaded roster. It's Nick Saban. He's going to make $10 million a year for the next decade or so. Um, is this just going to last forever? I mean, he he, he is, what, the, the bionic man at this point? Yeah, he's not lost a step. I mean, that's what's crazy is you look at his age um, and look at guys like, you know, Coach Bowden, who just passed away, Joe Paterno, Bear Bryant, when they were that age and how old they looked. Yeah. And he looks so much younger than those guys and acts so much younger. He's, you know, still so invigorated. And, um, I mean, I, I don't think there's any reason to think it's going to slow down anytime soon. This is certainly an interesting challenge because you replace offensive coordinator, you replace the Heisman Trophy, lose the Heisman Trophy winner, Lose a quarterback that went in the first round, lose another receiver that went in the first round, lose a running back that went in the first round, lose an offensive lineman that went in the first round. Any other program where you change your coordinator and lose all those first round picks, you would say, wow, they're going to take a huge step backwards. But when it is Alabama, people just don't expect that. They expect them to next five star up and they'll be just fine. Is this defense going to be better this year? Um, yeah, I think it is. I think this will be the best. If you go back to 2017, that was the last really good defense Alabama had, that national championship team. And, and to be fair to Alabama's defenses since then, I, I think there was kind of a dividing line for Alabama's defenses. When I look back at them, I look at pre-2013 and post-2013. 2013 felt like the year it all changed in the SEC when schools realized the RPO and the officials are going to let men be downfield a little bit on the passing plays. And that just changed everything. And offenses, if you go back and look, really took off then. And that was Lane Kiffin at Alabama and Gus Malzahn really kicking at Auburn at the time. Um, you, you know, Hugh Freeze was at Ole Miss, and that, those offenses were dynamic. Uh, Dan Mullen even at you know, Mississippi State with, with Dak Prescott. I mean, you had dynamic offenses. And that felt like when the SEC kind of turned towards offense. So, you know, I kind of look at it in the saving era anyway, in two separate times. And since then, I think this is going to be one of the best defenses. Alabama is loaded at linebacker. They are so good at linebacker. And uh, I think they're the best in the country, especially once Henry Toa Toa uh, transferred in from Tennessee. So they'll be so good in the front seven. They've got some guys to replace in the back uh, four, namely Patrick Sertan, another first-round pick. Yeah. Um, so they do have some holes to fill, but I do think this is going to be – it's going to be the best defense Pete Golding has had, and I think it'll be Alabama's best since 2017. So, so in a good five years or so, this is going to be their best defense. Going back to, I guess, Jalen Hurts, it's been kind of just plug-and-play at quarterback. Jalen Hurts and then Tua Tagovailoa takes over, and then it's Mac Jones, and he's better, I think, maybe than anybody gave him credit for going in. And now it's Bryce Young's turn. Will there be a beat missed at the quarterback position? Well, we just did. As weird as it is, Alabama was blowing teams out last year, but we saw very little of Bryce Young in the second half yeah. of the schedule. And, um, you know, normally you have gotten a pretty good taste of Alabama's backup by the time he's the starter. Uh, that was certainly the case with Tua Tagovailoa. I think everyone knew. I mean, there were people that were calling for him after the Mississippi State game in 2017. So everybody, I think, knew what you were getting with Tua. Um, you know, it, it's just 
it's a, you just haven't seen a lot of Bryce Young. And, you know, you lose Jalen Waddell and Devontae Smith, two top ten picks, one of them the Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, so, you know, where, where, do you, where do you get the receiver play, you know, is, is a big question. Um, you got a lot of young guys. You got John Matthews, who's an experienced guy. Slade Bolden, who's an experienced guy. You lose an NFL running back, as I mentioned, in Najee Harris. So, you know, there are a lot of questions around Bryce Young. But I think to answer your question, the expectation is he's the same guy that you've been seeing from all these other Alabama quarterbacks. Do they look different with a uh, another different offensive coordinator? Um, yeah, I, you know, it's interesting. I don't know what Bill O'Brien could do differently, um, what you would even want to do differently. When sure. you look at, you know, what, what how good this offense has been under Lane Kiffin, then under Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, Michael Oxley had a pretty good offense. Brian Dable, you know, in 2017, a lot of people are critical of him, but – you know, to be fair, he was – Jalen Hurts was struggling to complete passes. So, I would say if you see any changes at all um, out of out of the offense, I think those changes would be um, maybe the melding of the college offenses that are kind of making their way up to the NFL – with what is still being played in the NFL that Bill O'Brien was coaching up until last year, maybe more of a marriage of that is what you would get. Um, But, you know, you look at it and you're like, why would you change anything? I mean, what Steve Sarkeesian was doing was working very, very well. So, you know, if you're Bill O'Brien, why do you change anything? But you know this, all these guys have their way of coaching. They're not just going to come in and do what the last guy did. They're doing what they're comfortable with. So could you see more of a marriage of, the college stuff that's heading to the NFL plus the NFL stuff that maybe hasn't quite filtered down to college because of that. Yeah, I think you could see that. Visiting with Ryan Brown. He is co-host of The Next Round. You can check it out online at Next Round Live. You can get podcasts and videos and all kinds of other stuff. Let's switch for a couple of minutes over to Auburn, Ryan, if we can. Obviously, the questions start with Bo Nix slash new quarter or a new head coach and Brian Harson. Can Bo Nix progress because he's just been very very average for the last two years well i think a lot of people hang those hopes on uh brian harson and brian harson has got you know a good reputation in coaching quarterbacks and he's right. had some good quarterbacks over the year uh over the years so i i think a lot of people hope just a new sheet of music for him makes all the difference um you know gus malzahn it had gotten stale and people were you know, the fans themselves are kind of tired of it. And I think, you know, you could maybe make an argument that the players were kind of tired of the Gus Malzahn system as well. So I think just a reset, no matter how good the coach is, offense or, or quarterback, just a reset will help him. Just a different different look, different route trees, more expanded route trees and things like that. Um, but the fact that Brian Harson is well thought of as a quarterback's coach only helps that as well. You add to the – Add, add to that the fact that, you know, you've got one of the best running backs in the country and Tank Biggs be behind and that helps where you, what you don't have is a solid proven offensive line. They got a long way to go there. You also do not have any experience at receiver. Demetrius Robinson transferred in out of Georgia. He's the only guy that's got SEC experience, but he really has no cohesion with Bo Nix. So you got to learn that. So I think those are the big questions offensively is where do you throw the football and do you have time to throw? Because all Bo Nix's issues, not all of them, but the majority of Bo Nix's issues start with the fact that he either flushes from the pocket earlier than he yep. should or is flushed from the pocket way too early. Either one of those, and they build off one another. And, and that's where the vast majority of his problems begin. So if you can give him some protection, he can be a better quarterback, I think. Yeah, so many of the, the Bo Nix issues potentially related to the offensive line. When you look at this Auburn team, only got about a minute or so left. Yep. Um where, where, where do they finish? I, I mean, I know we do the whole win-loss thing when you, when you look at a team. Is this a, a seven-win team? Is it an eight-win team? Is it a nine-win team? I think eight wins would be extremely good. I mean, when you consider they have to play Alabama, Texas A&M, and Georgia just off the top, you've got an out-of-conference game with Penn State. Um, it, it's not an easy schedule by any stretch of the imagination. And Auburn gen, gen, generally plays a difficult schedule. Um, because they have Alabama and Georgia every year. Yeah. So I think eight wins would be a tremendous job 
by by Brian Horson. If he managed to get the nine, I think you talk about coach of the year in the Southeastern Conference. I think most people think seven is the number he'll land on. That's winning the games you think he should probably win and losing the ones you think he should probably lose. We'll see how it plays out. Certainly is going to be fun. It's going to be fun to follow the next round as well. Visit them online at Next Round Live. They've got their 40 teams in 40 days happening right now. Ryan, it's been a while. Always good to visit with you. Thanks for the time, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Let's do it again soon. That is Ryan Brown from the next round on the Farm Bureau phone line. We'll be back, and we'll hear from Mike Leach after this. Oh,